Uh, hi, my name is Rob Hegler. Uh, I've been in salmon and trout farming now for 15 years. Uh, most of that on the west coast around Vancouver Island doing Atlantic salmon cage culture and for the last few years here managing Cedar Crest Trout Farm. Um, what we have here is Camp Creek, um, very pristine water source of which we are allowed to take 3,000 gallons a minute as per our permits. Um, it's a very challenging system. We have periods in the summer of extremely low water. We have periods of the fall and early spring of extreme flooding and periods in the winter of frazzle ice and ice dams. So to manage that as well, we supplement the creek up here with water from a separate well to prevent frazzle ice from filling up. We have compensating gates to prevent us taking any more and preventing flooding from damaging the farm. And if the water gets too low, just 10 yards downstream from here, we have an outlet where we circulate the water from the end of the farm back into the creek so that there's no damage below our intake uh, from taking the water out of the source. Okay, so at this section here we have the header. This is an area for settling out large solids like gravel and rocks that may float in through the system. It's also an area where we can settle out branches and small solids like cedar debris and such. Uh, it's also a point of capture where we can capture any predatory fish that may get sucked in through the creek so we can return them to the creek. It's also a point where we balance out the flows between raceways. We have special boards segmented to a certain height as per raceway to send and control the flow through each raceway. So if one raceway needs more or one can use less, we can regulate the flow from the 3,000 gallons per minute and divide it equally or as need be through all the other raceways. This is also the area where we use uh, all our data for point of entry, water temperature, dissolved oxygen and nutrient levels that are coming in to balance out with what leaves the farm. So at this point here, I'll pour, point out the feeders. Our feeders are demand feeders. So what happens is after a while, the fish are trained to hit a metal rod that's set up on a pendulum system so that um, as they need feed, they can take feed. At this stage of the fish's life cycle, we can feed them as much feed as they can take and they'll convert it efficiently. However, we're not able to feed them all the time. So this supplements their dietary end so that they're full and growing all the time. And that way we make sure that they stay growing at a consistent level. At the end of each raceway, we have a screen set up for containment. Sometimes we have a double screen for containment. This not only prevents the fish from moving between raceways, but it helps contain the floating solids and the settling solids. Every group of solids that we can collect at this point would be collected by siphon or by pump at the tail of each raceway. And we have a system in place that the green standpipe you see, we can pump directly into for sewage recovery. So basically, if we're running 150,000 fish in here, we can collect pretty much 80% of their waste, waste feed, hopefully which we don't have, and fecal material before it leaves this raceway so that we can continue to raise fish throughout the system. So each raceway we have is set up with a supplemental airline. Um, even though we do have considerable fall between the systems and we have considerable flow going through them, uh, we still need to supplement oxygen because the numbers we're running at. It's a, a simple system of air stones spread out throughout the head and uh, it adds about one part per million oxygen to each raceway, each pass. In this section here, we'd only have our large brood stock, up and coming brood stock, and large fingerling production. Uh, at this point, the water is used several times over. And even though it's still at about six parts per million, it's not efficient for small fish to use at this point. Uh, we do add oxygen in, but we keep our densities low because this is the next stage before it gets settled out, before it re-enters the creek. So we don't devalue the water any more than it is at this point.
This is the final settling area in which we'd pump. This is done once a week so we can get rid of all floating solids and give them a space to recollect. Uh, in the winter time we do this less frequently but uh, in the summertime we might even do it bi-weekly depending on the amount of feed that's coming through the system so we can settle it out. At this point here it gets collected into two culverts and then ends up going down a, about a hundred yard discharge channel. Down the discharge channel it has uh, a long distance to sell out. It has two settling out areas as well but by that point it's very little floating solids that come out there. Um, according to our permit we're only allowed to have a certain amount of phosphorus come through and this is how we make sure that we don't go above that. So over there you can see our deep water well. It's about 90 feet deep and it pumps 200 gallons per minute. It's at a fairly constant temperature between six to nine degrees Celsius. Before it can enter our coverall, we have it go through a biofilter aeration stack into a cistern. The cistern provides us with 40 minutes of water in case the pump gets shut down at maximum flow. We'll have 40 minutes before we run out of water. That gives us time to mitigate or create a response before we have to supplement water into our early rearing section. So that's just a general overview, a very basic idea of how we use water and return it to the system here at Cedar Crest Trout Farm.